wonderful. Renata, your first guess is ready. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Hey, you know, trees are so special because they have stories to tell. They start off as tiny little seeds and grow and grow, and they can live for thousands of years. Check out this one. It's called Methuselah. How do you think it is? They say it's one of the oldest trees in the world. It's more than 4,852 years old. Now look at this tree. It's a bald cypress and it's located right here in Central Florida. They call it Lady Liberty. How old do you think it is? Nature officials say it's 2,000 years old. Amazing, right? Well, trees are at the root of one artist's work here in Central Florida, Jakub Reyes. He uses large sheets of raw wood to make statements about who he is and who we all are. We've got an exciting show for you featuring some of his art and as always, some conversation. It's all starting in three, two, one. Renata Sago, your host. Woodblock prints and lithographs are some of the ways that Jakub Reyes takes people on a visual journey through history and culture in the pre- and post-colonial world. His work explores life and death, destruction and rebirth, rebellion and transcendence, and freedom. Yakub is here with us now with more on that. Hey, Yakub. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's so great to see you. Oh, Likewise. my goodness. We were just discussing uh, just how we make all of these things happen in the midst of technology. Oh, yeah. Now, in the year of COVID. <laughs> right. Now, before COVID hit, you had a lot going on. You had basically an installation in Puerto Rico that you were pretty much going to be going to do. That was canceled. You had a 400-foot mural in Central Florida that you were preparing to work on. That was put on hold. You were teaching kids. The school ended up closing. It's just a lot going on. And at the same time, you tell us that 2020 is gearing up to be your biggest year yet. Oh, yeah. Um, this year, like you said, um, had its you know ups and downs. But I've been using this time to um, you know spend more time in the studio, kind of like um, gearing up with a plan of attack to uh, to you know get you know grants and and and. Um, really hone in on my installation skills and those kind of ideas. So um, I've, I've had so many opportunities this year that I wouldn't have had um, if I was, you know, out of the country and stuff like that. So it's been interesting and exciting, to say the least. It sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, you were being a part of some sort of workshop with international artists. Can you tell us a bit about that? Oh, yeah. So um, I... I sometimes have artists visit me from different um, countries and um, and I host them and, and we do, um, you know, different screen prints or murals around town. And um, also, like um, the Puerto Rico installation, I would have, uh, you know, been part of the International um, Graphics Association, their conference, and I was going to have an installation on the beach, um, wow. which shows, you know, colonialism and... Um, pre-Catholic religions and how that relates to um, Puerto Rico, which is something that's really close to my heart because I am Puerto Rican as well. So. Yeah, your identity is so much tied to your work. You are Puerto Rican, you are Cuban, you're Pakistani. What were some of your biggest influences growing up? Well, food is actually really um, big for me because, and obviously religion. Um, there were big players in my childhood. Um, so, um, you know, when I didn't have the religious aspect, I always had the food aspect. Um, and that was like a direct line to my cultures, you know? Um, so that's a way that I can experience it with also, you know, the obvious architecture of mosques, you know, when, when I go inside, I see um, all the, the all the um, symbols and imagery and and of course the Catholic Church, um, 
you see people represented in the, those spaces. Um, so those are big, you know, key factors that melded, you know, my lifestyle together. Um, mm-hmm. And that really influences me. You know, it's, it's, it's all the senses, you know, the visual, you know, the listening, you know, to these things every, you know, Saturday or Sunday or whenever, um, you know, tasting, you know, everything, feeling. Uh, it was just a whole experience that has shaped, you know, my work today. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, it's, it's phenomenal because when we look at, you know, how you describe your art, you say that you you investigate, you investigate your personal heritage. And I, I love that you use that word. I'm really curious mm-hmm. about what is what is something that you've you know, investigated and really discovered about yourself or about your personal heritage since being on this artistic journey? I mean, there are so many um, kind of, you know, those those little spaces that you don't really get to go into. You know, my work is very, like, introspective. They kind of take my affinities or, or what I'm really passionate about and I get to delve into that, you know, historically, um, within my family's history, um, and within myself. And, and it comes from honesty and um, a lot of other things that, you know, you kind of have to confront, you know, only with yourself. Mm. And I think, I think that um, has opened my eyes to, you know, lots of things that others have um, dealt with a lot of things that I've dealt with and maybe have repressed, you know, mm. and, um, and along with my family, you know, it's, it's all so entwined, you know, it's tied together. Um, and you can't, you know, look at one without the other. So that's, that's why it's an investigation because, um, it kind of always unfurls into, you know, a rabbit hole where you just continuously, um, finding new things about yourself and about, you know, culture and family. And those are all things that are really important to me. Yeah, that's yeah. so phenomenal. I mean, I, as you investigate, you're kind of digging and you're exposing. And then people who are connected to you, they see too. They see parts of themselves, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty amazing. Like I had... um. So my grandparents are immigrants from um, Cuba and Puerto Rico, respectively. And they came over um, to New Jersey, New York area, and they found, you know, kind of laborious uh, factory jobs and janitorial jobs, you know, stuff like that. And, um, you know, anything to make a living. And uh, so I did a project for Creative City that... um, interviewed um, first generation immigrants, um, just like my grandparents and just like my parents. Um, uh, And a lot of people were able to connect because there are a lot of first generation immigrants in Florida, Mm. um, especially from Puerto Rico, because we're so close and Cuba as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And that connection was something that, you know, I was looking for within you know, my own community and, you know, outside of it. So it was really cool to see, you know, people connecting and, and, you know, I, I just became, you know, like a storyteller for them, you know, put to put them in the forefront because I believe that their stories are important because I believe that my family story is important and um, being able to kind of facilitate that and um, bring it to our community was uh, a highlight um, of last year. Beautiful. So let me just ask you a quick question before we take a look at some of your work and your process. Where does the Pakistani part come in? So that is still part of the investigation. Oh, (laughs) Oh, really? My dad is a a first-generation immigrant from Pakistan. And um, I'm actually... um, you know, going back and retracing all those steps, you know, because there was like a Romeo and Juliet type of romance with my grandparents, you know, from India and Pakistan. And it's very, um, it's something that I haven't um, 
given much time to because I'm more tied with, um, and I know more people on my Puerto Rican and Cuban side. So that's definitely something that's going to um, continue to take shape over the years. Um, but for right now, I'm focusing on my Caribbean roots. Lovely. Well, you sent us some videos of yourself and your process. Let's take a look at them now. that I penetrated through these corridors, and I went through that last segment where I went through these dark serpentines. I passed through that corridor where they sat, where they are. And when you penetrate to the Most High God, you will believe you're mad. You will believe you've gone insane. But I tell you, if you follow the secret window, and you die in ego nature, Oh yes, there is many a man or woman who's been put in the same asylum and this has happened to them. And they're sitting there today, people think they're insane, but they saw something that's real. And they see it when they're on drugs. The only thing is 
because they see it not through the light of God. And the way I've shown you, I show you this view through the light of God and the understanding of God. Because when you see the face of God, you will die. And there will be nothing left in you except the God man, the God woman, the heavenly man, the heavenly woman, the heavenly child. There'll be prayer on you this day of night. There'll be a song of jubilee waiting for your king. There will be nothing you will look, be looking for in this world excepting for your God. This is all a dream, a dream in death. And so I went through that with you. I encountered hell and the great serpentines of the highest order. And I went through that when I showed you child number three. The question is asked in order of some and some and concerning the pit. This horrible pit of my replay. If the word in front of you can ask me a question. If it's asked from the right being or the right soul out of order.
Okay, so you're originally from New Jersey, right? Yes. Um, Orlando. Orlando. You know, what is it about this place? How has it shaped your, your art, your creative career? Well, I think Orlando is definitely a unique city. You know, it, it feels, I, I always describe it as the Wild West um, because I feel like I'm really able to do whatever I want, I guess. You know, oh. there's there's a specific amount of people doing specific things, and I feel like I can explore and kind of have a lot of freedom, you know, um, because as you go more into the tri-state area, it's more condensed, you know, and there's a lot more people doing um, kind of the same thing that you are, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So you have like a lot of competition and a lot of, uh, I guess, surveillance, if you will. Um, and down here in Florida, it's just Florida in general. Um, there's just a ton of opportunities, you know, outside of, you know, Orlando and in Miami and Jacksonville. Um, there's just it's it's kind of like three or four states into one, you know, because <laughs> Florida is so <laughs> large. So I'm able to, like, you know, go to the West Coast and, you know, be a part of St. Printersburg. And then I can go, you know, to, you know, Cocoa, Melbourne area and, you know, practice my installations on the beach. And I can go to Miami and be a part of Art Basel. And I can, uh, you know, go to Gainesville and and learn about plants and stuff, which is part of my new series and and then I can go to Jacksonville. So it's just yeah. th there's there's so much opportunity and there's there's a need and a want for art, um, which is exciting to me. Yes. <laughs> I wish I had more time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Wild West of the Southeast. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to devote this conversation to your uncle uh, who has transitioned at yes. what, what, how, yeah. he was 100, uh, what, 100... Years, and six, actually. Six. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, Yakub, we're excited to hear about your series on plants. How can we follow your work? So you can uh, follow me on Instagram at Yakub Reyes, or uh, you can go on my website, yakubreyes.com, and uh, we'll be posting more uh, interviews and, and, and fun stuff like that. So. I definitely appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing more. And you, I hope you have enjoyed today's show. You can find more episodes on demand at orangetvfl.net. Follow me as well at Renata Sago. We're looking for more talent as well. I know it's out there. All you have to do is submit your video to live at orangetvfl.net. Do it through Dropbox or WeTransfer, and we might use it on a future episode of Live From Home. Until next time, stay well.